Okay, it is a beautiful morning. We're here at the Fenerian Sword, and I just had a request from a friend to carve a um, letter opener. This is something I've never done before, but I'm going to go with a basic um, form of a knife. And um, before we get started, I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to carve a knife. I'm going to have an official video later, but for now, I'm just going to show the basic steps of how it is done and what happens from beginning to end. This is a lot more simple than a sword. There's less steps. It's it's easier to carve because all the knives now are made of um, poplar instead of, and they're, they're carved out of poplar instead of pine, which is used for swords now because it's easier to have, it's, it's better to have a strong sword and then a weak knife. All right, so this one is about um, eight inches. It was a lot of difficult work, so I did actually um, go across the boundaries here. It was It's a pretty short knife, um, but you can see I've got a little bit of a pommel here, and it, it arcs up down to the, to the um, carved-in hilt right here, and then this is all there is to the blade on the uh, knife, but there's, there's more up here and then less down here. So that's a, that's a basic um, hunting knife, I'd call it. This one was a little stylized. I, uh, there's a little class up here, you know, it's a, it's, a nice, it's a nice tip. This was actually a weird kind of edge. It came up from here, or down from here, all the way down to here, and then went back, and then went back up um, near, the, uh, near the tip. I rarely do that. In this case, it's all straight. It's all straight up here, and then carved down on each side with the knife, and then finish it up with the rest. This is what I mean in class. For a handle, it kind of arcs. It's not just straight up and down. And then this is the pommel. I, I might need to carve a little bit more on that with the rasp. Um, but till then, until I figure out something cool, I'll just leave it like that. This is the most recent one I've carved. Um, there's there's uh, one more that I'm still in the process of carving. Uh, this one, which is very basic. Although this is one of the first knives I use for a taper point, which I basically only do on swords nowadays. Um, it's straight up and down. It's, it's, it's a pretty shallow... Uh, edge on this side, but it's not, not so much on there. The handle is very basic, um, but I really like the knife, how it feels anyway. Um, yeah, basic, basic ones are, are, are nice to have around. Even even if they, even a little classy one, is, 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 it really doesn't matter how, how nice you have it. If you like basic, take a basic one. If you like fancy, then you can take an elfish one, elven. You can have an elven. This particular uh, uh, letter opener, which I've never actually carved before, except for that little one over there. I'm going to have a Paladin Pictures logo, which is where my friend uh, works. He's actually my godfather. Uh, and so that, that, that's adding a little class to it. It's, uh, I'm going to use that with the gouges. And then maybe a little decoration along the uh, blade. It's not going to be a blade where, um, where it comes in like this, or in like this, or in like this, it's going to be flat. It's gonna, it's gonna be totally flat. It's gonna, it's gotta be, it's gotta be thin enough to, to effectively slice through paper, and then um, I'll have to use some, some pretty good uh, sanding on that one so that it's sharp enough, but it's not, it won't splinter. Um, and I'll also uh, oil it, maybe use uh, one coat of baby oil, which is really good for this type of wood. It makes it a lot stronger, believe it or not. Um, and then, after we've carved down all the measurements on the blade and then carved off um, the places where we have the tip, I'll skim across the corners on the handle and then basically just use the rasp to go up and down it um, to keep it flat and, and even and mostly smooth. And then I'll take a really um, fine sander and go up and down a bunch of times and then try to get as close into the uh, hilt from the blade as I can um, so it doesn't look really improper. Um, and then after that, it should be basically finished, but in this case, um, I'm going to have to have the board pretty thin, and then I'll leave some space for the handle. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure something weird out with the, um, with the edges so that they... Basically, I, I think what I'll do is I'll just make a regular edge, and then I'll take out the um, the ridge where where the where the two edges meet so it'll be easier to to stick in through, through the letter the and then slice um, right through the paper it's all going to be sanded with a really fine sander so it, it won't splinter very easily but I still need to be um, sharp exceptionally sharp the swords I don't need to be um, that sharp if they're very sharp they'll break you we'll just go straight in with uh, this little prop get it down to a board and go from there I'm gonna go with this little prop as the um, Final, 
final chip to start carving the letter opener. Um, you can see it's very skinny, and I didn't think it would be um, good enough for a knife. And basically, I was right. It's not going to be good for a knife. However, a letter opener is what will be very good for it. Um, it'll it'll work okay. I, I just need to remember to keep the thickest parts. Um, hear me out when I say thick. There is really nothing thick on this on this chip right here. Um, I'll keep the the things that aren't aren't ground really really fine. Um, for the blade so that I have enough space to work with. We're going to start by taking a lot of things out with the planer. It is thin enough so that I don't have to take out a lot. We're going to start with the hatchet just by taking off this bark that's left here and then carving down a little to uh, make it easier for the planer to just bump along. <laughs> Alright, so what we've done here is we've gotten it to the point where it's good, but it's a little uneven. Um, the handle is not a big problem since I'll be working, I'll be modifying that a lot anyway. Um, I might even want to wrap that with something, maybe some leather, uh, but if I don't, I'll just, I'll just put a design on it. Um, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to move up to a coarse sander to get the blade flat, and then there is some chipping along... Uh, what is going to become the blade here? Not not really chipping, but uh, but a lot missing. So we're going to have to modify it so that we miss, um, so that we go along that as we're doing the blade, um, so that if something was there, it would just be taken off anyway. Um. All right, so I finished sanding, and I noticed that the tip of the blade here, or what's going to be the blade here, was too raised, so it threw off. Um, the whole evenness of this part right here, the whole, basically the whole blade, or what's going to become the blade, um, and it's also it's also a little too thin. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to lop off this tip right here, um, which won't make it shorter, but in this case it's not really a big deal. Um, all right, we've got that done. Now I'm going to form the tip just by cutting off a bit with the knife, and then finishing it up with the rasp. Come back in five seconds. Okay, I got the tip formed, and now I'm going to form the miniature edges just with a, a tiny amount of uh, pencil and ruler, um, and then I'll start forming it. You, know, you see how tiny this thing is compared to the regular knives, but it's going to be a sharp and <clears throat> deadly letter opener. In any case, uh, what, what, the, uh, what cutting off uh, that last bit did, um, and then forming the... Uh, the, the tip, it knocked off most of the difficulty of these divots in here, so that shouldn't be too much of a big deal when forming the edges. I finished up the measurements, and you can see how little space I have to spare on a real knife. There's a lot more to go on that, so in this case, I'll be a tiny bit of carving on each side, and I'll be done. And I'll, I'll, I will finish it up with the rasp, but I think I'll be using more of the file side of the rasp in this case. So we're going to start with the knife going on the edges. And I'll try to keep away from the tip because we don't want to shorten it out too much before we're ready and then have it break right in the middle. That would not be good. All right, we've gotten all the way down to the measurements with the knife. Now we're going to go on to the rasp. And after we do the sanding, especially with the fine sander, 
We should have a pretty darn sharp blade. All right, so after the sanding on the blade, I smoothed down the corners here with the knife and the rasp. And after after I do a little more sanding here, um, right here, especially because it's really dark, um, I'm going to add a logo, the Paladin Pictures logo, right here, and uh, maybe fill it in with some ink. I'm going to use the gouges to do the inscription. the ink to the logo, I spread a, um, a coat of um, this charcoal ink I made over the, over the logo, and then after it dried, I scraped it off and then sanded away the excess stuff, and this is what I got. So it's, it's not super, um, it doesn't super jump out at you, it's not, it's not incredibly easy to see, but you know it's there. So this is what we'll have, and then I think after... After so this is this is basically the finished result, but um, we're gonna go on to a little. I'm gonna do a little curve over here, and um, and then I'll sand everything one more time. Okay, this is the little design I've carved here. It's basically just a little squiggle along the blade, or sorry, not along the blade, along the handle. And I will use. Let's see, what's the smallest? I'm gonna use this to kind of mark, go along it, this little uh, gouge. Let's see if I can get it open without cutting myself. Um, this is the smallest one we have, and it's probably the sharpest one. I'll just go, I'll just go along the little squiggle with it, and then I'll actually carve it out with this one. It's really neat. It's just sharp enough to peel easily along the wood. Um, and it is, it is kind of like a shovel. It's got a little, uh, little that, uh, arc over here at the end. So, we'll be doing that. You make sure I don't cut my finger off. Or stab it. Looks good. good. Alright, so what we've got here is this um, charcoal ink I made. And basically, right now it's a little too thick, so I'm going to add a little more water to it. And originally it had oil as its base, so I didn't even think it was going to dry when I first did the logo. Um, but I'm going to add a little more water to it, and then add it to this squiggle here. Um, and um, after it dries, which should be quicker than the oil-based one, say about six hours at the least. Oh, actually, maybe six hours at the most in this case. Um, then I'll sand it off. Um, or I'll, I'll, t I'll take the excess stuff off and then um, I'll sand it and that should get basically everything that leaked away from the actual um, thing we were aiming for and then we'll be done. Except for maybe one coat of baby oil. Okay, so we'll let that dry, and hope it doesn't get onto this. I think it's already wearing off if it was. 
and then we'll sand off the excess and we should have the indentation of the squiggle there. Completely finished the uh, painting. I got the, got the ink in and um, it dried pretty well and I got the excess off. It was, it was definitely better as a uh, water base. Um, so yeah, it shows up pretty well. And then on the other side, I was able to get the, the runoff, there was a bit of runoff here as well, I was able to get that off, so, you, so they both appear pretty well, so I'll be good with that. And I am going to do one coat of baby oil, and then we'll be done. Alright, we have the completely finished project right here, um, and all the baby oil um, does to indicate that it was on there at all is that it does have a bit of a darker color. If you put another coat of baby oil after um, letting this one dry for six hours, uh, it'll be even darker. And one of the swords I had in there that was in really bad shape, I put three on, and it did it did a lot for the uh, integrity of the sword. Um, oh, and a couple of things you may have noticed along in the video is um, this cut on my knuckle. I did not get that from carving. And uh, my cousin Zeke is a huge LOTR um, super geek. And he's he's pretty sure I just uh, carved one of my best swords ever, which is which is a uh, pine one that I uh, experimented with the gouges on. And we'll um, cover more of that in our next video. So, yeah, that's a Fenarian uh, letter opener, which I've absolutely never carved before, but it was fun to it was fun to do. And it is a little more tricky than most knives, but it was also a little bit easier in some cases.